The next task to consider is balancing. It is important to keep individual battery cells roughly at the same state of charge. Otherwise, the cell with the highest SOC level will limit the amount of charge that we can put into the pack, rendering the system underutilized. This state logic calculates the voltage difference between the highest and lowest cell voltages and, based on whether this difference exceeds a design value, activate passive balancing. Balance command is a Boolean vector that indicates which bleed resistor to activate so that the cell SOC is slowly reduced. Doing this with all cells but the one whose SOC is the lowest eventually makes all SOCs converge within a prescribed tolerance. Let's now take a second look at the simulation results. In this driving, charging, balancing sequence example, we first observe the individual cell voltages changing as a result of current flowing in and out. At the beginning of the simulation, they are slightly different because we initialize the model with a slight SOC imbalance. Towards the end of the simulation, the values converge towards one another as a result of the balancing procedure. And how about current? Look at the charging period. During the constant current stage, the current is derated because the maximum module cell voltage is high enough compared to a prescribed 4.4 volt limit that an excessively high current could drive the voltage beyond the threshold, significantly limiting the life of the battery. Since we calculate the limit based on the maximum resistance value within the battery cell lookup table, we are being conservative. A less conservative current limiting calculation could use the actual battery cell resistance at the estimated SOC and temperature, since this information is available at all operating conditions. The temperature traces show a significant discrepancy among the hottest and coldest cell. The reason is mainly the asymmetry in the module layout in terms of thermal behavior. Cell number six gets significantly hotter than cell number one because it is thermally insulated on one side. Even when the maximum temperature reached during the simulation is not of immediate concern in terms of safety, the temperature difference exhibited here will eventually cause a much faster degradation of cell 6 compared to cell 1, leading to an undesirable unevenness in cell condition. Hence the need for active thermal management to keep thermal differences within a few degrees Celsius. The graph at the top right shows three SOC estimation traces of the same battery cell, each performed with a different method. Yellow corresponds to Coulomb counting, blue corresponds to UKF, and orange to EKF. The initial SOC in this simulation is 75%, but the SOC estimators were initialized to 80% to assess their capability to recover. It is apparent that Coulomb counting never does, because it has no way to realize it is wrong due to the absence of voltage information. Both common filter algorithms, on the other hand, recover from the initial error within the first hour of simulated time, with the EKF slightly outperforming the UKF. And finally, the other two scopes indicates the BMS state and each of the six balance command signals, respectively. In summary, we've utilized Simulink, Stateflow, Simscape, and Control System Toolboxes to design a battery management system using modeling and simulation.